Welcome to our November video update. Uh, just an update on QP and what's been happening in the last week or so. This past week we have shown what strength in numbers can do. When the Ford government introduced and passed Bill 28, Keeping Students in School Act or in Class Act, stripping QP education workers of collective bargaining rights and the right to strike by forcing them into an agreement upon them, uh, the education workers were left with no choice but to hit the picket line to protest Bill 28 and protect their rights under the Charter of Rights. Last Friday, educational workers went on strike and the labor movement from both the public and private sector unions were all in support of this process. The labor movement was quick to recognize that this attack on collective bargaining rights would not stop at the educational workers. Fast, um, fast forward to Monday and after results, a weekend polling showed that 71% of respondents placed the blame squarely on the shoulders of Doug Ford and his conservative government. This left Doug Ford and his conservatives no choice but to repeal Bill 28, um, provided that the educational workers returned to work and took down their picket lines. A very clear message has been sent to this government that if you mess with one, you will need to answer to all. I would like to thank everyone who stood shoulder to shoulder with CUPE across Ontario and to send this message to Doug Ford and Stephen Leachy, solidarity for all, and forward together we can make changes happen. Local news here at the Hall, upcoming events here at the local. November, the Community Service Committee will be participating in the Ingersoll Santa Claus Parade. Volunteers are needed. Um, November 27th, after the general membership meeting, the Community Service Committee again will be holding the annual Teddy Bear Christmas from 1 to 4 here at the Hall. More information can be found on our website or on our Facebook page for both of these events. A ceremony will be held at the November General Membership Meeting to recognize the December 6th National Day of Action and Remembrance for Gender-Based Violence, remembering the 14 women murdered at Lake Okole Polytech in Montreal in 1989. This is put on by the Women's Committee. And then just finally, an update from Port Elgin. The fall 2020 Pell session is in the final month. Everything has been going great. We've got good reports from both our participants and from Port Elgin staff. Everybody should have received a confirmation email now for their course. If not, please contact me. And when you're in Port Elgin on layoff, make sure you put your employer down as Unifor National, and the address will be on the end of the video. Thank you, and have a good day. Hello and thank you for watching our video. My name is Mike Van Bokel, I'm the plant chair. We were recently informed our production timelines were getting changed once again. It has been a very difficult time for our members. We already have over 200 members as of today that have no sub, no imp, and are no longer eligible for EI. By mid-March, we'll have over 600 members in that same boat. Contractually, it is clear. We go to one shift, and the top 400 or so members will work every week in the plant. Those members would be spread across the plant. That would mean approximately 80% of you senior members would lose your job of record, and over half of you would be working somewhere on the assembly lines. However, you would be working full time and earning full wages. The issue for myself and for the other reps was the two thirds of our members that would remain home. 600 members having nothing by mid-March was a major concern. We now have worked out a plan to return everyone with a two week rotation with the opportunity for our senior members to work every single week. We've also worked out different options which many of you will wanna consider. If you intend to work when the company calls you back, you only need to follow the instructions of the shift and attend your work shift when required. You don't need to come to any of our information sessions. The information sessions will take about 30 minutes and we will go over the various options we have worked out. Some members may prefer to avoid the recall back to rotating layoffs for a variety of reasons, such as wanting to remain with an employer that they have committed to. Those members will be able to delay their recall. For those of you who didn't sign up for the ESA option to either retire or leave CAMI, you may want to consider that option in 2023. There may be a requirement for some members to only work one week to get the necessary training to learn the new product, and they, can alt they also can elect to stay off until October. We also are exploring the option of working at Woodstock and Oshawa GM at a full on a full-time basis during these layoffs starting January 1st. 
That is not finalized yet. However, we are looking at that as a viable option. We have asked the company to begin new apprentices and they have agreed. However, we are still waiting on the trade and on the number and a start date. But if you are interested in apprenticeships, you need to start getting your paperwork in order to apply. Maybe you just want an LOA for the entire period. That will also be an option. If you're a parent with a young kid at home or young children at home, we have options for you to consider as well. We will explain all of these options in much more detail in person this Friday, November 11th and Monday, November 14th at the Union Hall from 8 a.m. until 11, from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. every day on the hour, except for 11 a.m. Friday, which is Remembrance, the Remembrance Hour. But every other hour on the hour this Friday and next Monday, we'll give a half hour description for everybody that can make it in. You do not need to register, just show up this Friday or Monday and you'll be able to hear the various options. I also want to make everyone aware of what's going on with vacation and some of the issues. We still do have mandatory vacation. The month of January has now been opened up and it is wide open for people to book any full weeks that you would like. We will be maintaining our mandatory vacation once we return. As everyone is very aware, production plans can change very quickly, but this is what we know as of today and all our plans are currently being geared to towards right now. So right now, I would like to be very clear on what the 2023 plan looks like starting in January so everybody can start getting their lives prepared for this. Some people argue that it's changing a lot, but at least I give kudos to the company. They're at least telling us what they know as they know it. It might change, but you can write this down as of for now anyway. All team leaders will be required to work for two weeks, the weeks of January 16th and the weeks of January 23rd on day shift in the plant. Now after this, I need everyone to pay very close attention. We are going to work on a two-week rotation. However, you can mark this on your calendars. A shift, everybody who posted to A shift, will come back on January 30th for one week. On B shift will come back on February 6th for one week. And C shift will come back on February 13th for one week. That gets everybody back into the plant much quicker. Then starting the week of February 20th, A shift will start to work two weeks in a row and will continue on from there. Two weeks B shift, two weeks C shift and keep going. We will post this schedule soon and so will Cami on our, our respective websites. I just want everybody can start paying attention to that. So the top third will get an option to come to work. But if you're a designated A, B, or C, you can start putting those weeks down as the weeks that you can come and work. In closing, the 4% bonus. This has been a very frustrating experience. We do not want a repeat of what has happened to other locations last year during layoff periods. Please remember, only those outside the eight-year grow-in will receive the 4% bonus. Members in the eight-year grow-in get a raise each year for the eight years, so the 4% was directed at everyone with greater than eight years of seniority. The 4% bonus is going to be paid out the week of November 23rd, so I think it's the 24th or 25th. We will be getting the 4% paid out. Um, that is all I have in this part, so we do hope to see you guys Friday and Monday at the meetings. You can decide what is best for you and for your family. Some of the options that you're going to hear have timelines attached to them, so please come to the meetings and get the facts before making a choice. We are very aware many members are upset right now. We are not going to jump up and down and tell everyone that these are great options or that this is a great scenario. We should be working 40 to 48 hours each week. If GM had a choice, we would all be working 48 hours every week, six days every week. GM makes billions of dollars. They need the plants to run. And when suppliers can't deliver, it becomes extremely frustrating. Our members want and deserve information, but you want facts, you don't want rumors. The company posts the information as they know it. It changes, which is very frustrating. But this is a brand new model. These are brand, sorry, this is not a new model. These are brand new systems which are still being developed and worked on. When I was growing up, look how much changed in five years from the Flintstones to the Jetsons. That's how quick technology can change. We tried our best to help everyone, and we tried to retain our entire membership. We ask that you come out again this Friday and Monday to see what will work best for you and your family.